Like, like I said, I'm, I'm actually positively surprised that so many are here because I know it's early. I wouldn't be here otherwise. Um, let's try to dive into the topic anyway. Um, so I want to talk about a bit auditing and stuff that's happening around that. So generally, you know, security is always something like this. Um, I think yesterday Facebook was in the news for losing, I don't know, 50 million user credentials or something like that. Um, so it's a joy for everybody. And oftentimes you were just saying it's fine and then stuff develops and at some point you figure out, maybe you hear in the media that you're in the media and then you say, oh, this is no longer fine and everybody is talking about us and complaining. And basically we don't want to get to that point. We want to figure out earlier that stuff is happening. So let's see, um, obviously there are no silver bullets. I'm not promising you the final solution. Um, nobody should, I'm just trying to discuss one problem, a possible solution. So I want to start off with Audit D. Is anybody using Audit D? Or how much is anybody using Audit D? Bit, okay. Um, so it's, well, for auditing from kernel events and in the user space, um, it's basically writing the, the auditing events and then you can also see them. So basically you have our search and our report uh, to see what your system is up to. And you can define various rules what you want to monitor. Um, basically, it's stuff like file access, network access, system calls, um, stuff that users were running successfully or unsuccessfully. All of that can be audited, and basically you can figure out what has been going on there. It generally looks like something like this. You have the application that is running, and then in the kernel, um, there are three possible event types that you can catch with the auditing daemon. Um, either you have some user interaction, you have some task or something that is exiting, and on any one of these, you can then define an exclude rule, and whatever is being cut or caught by one of these three and then passes through the exclude rule will be be locked by the auditing daemon. So this is basically how you get to events. And then you have a syntax to actually define those rules and how to get to the auditing events afterwards. Um, so just what, what that basically looks like is um, sudo re, report um, basically shows you um, this is what I have in my logs. This is just the, those the statistics. So you can see we have, for example, 29 logins on that uh, system and we have two users and five terminals and whatever we have there. Um, it's all based on the logs, so which is uh, in var log uh, audit audit.log. And here, for example, you have one event. This was the audit daemon, so you can see we have a daemon start, we have the message audit, then we have the Unix timestamp, and I think the colon then has the process ID um, or the identifier of that, and you can see, okay, this was when the audit D daemon was started. And in the end, we have, like, the result was it was a success. And then you have various other messages, so you always have a type of event, then you have this message with the timestamp, you probably have a process ID or auditing ID, um, you have if you ran a process which command you were running and the success, and all of that is in the log here. And that is basically what our report is also using for the statistics then what is happening on your system. And this is nice that you have that log file, but obviously once you have more than one system you don't want to look into log files, but you want to centralize that and figure out um, where stuff is happening and what is happening. So, um, by the way, if you want to understand the log better, uh, for example, Red Hat has a very nice documentation page where they just show and walk you through various examples what all the parts of the logs are. Um, one thing that I found slightly lacking, or that's another thing that is nice, is you have more example rules of what to do, which looks something like this, so here, this is their page. Um, basically here you have a set of rules that you can just use and then learn how to define certain things. For example, failed user uh, login attempts or somebody tried to access something they were not allowed to access or something to run that they were not allowed to run. Um, here you have some example rules which you can simply use. The syntax might um, look slightly weird, um, but yeah. This is what you get, for example. These are just examples that are collected here and you can just reuse them. Um, one thing that I found slightly lacking or is still, for if you are doing anything with namespaces and containers, um, that is still work in progress. Um, so knowing which namespace was doing what, um, is, it's broken up into lots of tasks now, which seem to be tackled slowly, uh, but that is still kind of work in progress. So the idea is now we want to 
get all of that information and ideally centralize it somewhere and not just have to log into one instance and run all report. Um, so why am I talking about that? I want to centralize all of that. And I work for Elastic, the company behind the Elastic Stack, Elk Stack. Anybody using that already? OK. Probably directly or indirectly somewhere. Um, I always have the warning, yes, this is kind of like a Hello World example. It's very simplistic. Um, but all the code and everything is online, so you can try that out afterwards if you want to as well. That is our stack. If you've never seen it, that is what you interact with generally for the UI. This is where you store data. And then we have these two components to collect data. And the beats are actually the thing that are collecting all of that stuff for us that are relevant. Um, you know, that's a good old elk stack. And that's where the name is coming from. And that's why we have the elk. The problem was there is no B in elk. And at some point, we then came up with this, um, which is the belk or the elk B. Um, but we're always about scaling. And then even marketing realized this is not very scalable, because what happens if we add another open source product, project to that? Then we have to add another letter, and then we have to redo the entire thing. Um, so we had that for a short while. This is the official belk or elk B. Um, but we got kind of rid of that, and now we just call it the Elastic Stack. So whatever open source projects we have, we can just put them into that stack, and we don't always have to redo the marketing. Um, yeah, anyway. So now it's just that stack. All Apache 2 license, so you can just go crazy and use that. So we have something called FileBeat, which is generally there to get log files. I always say it's like tail F, but over the network and on steroids. So basically what that is doing is it's just tailing the various log files that you have in your system, and it tries to get meaningful information out of that. So um, what that could look like is, if you've never seen Kibana, this is Kibana, I'll just show you some pre-built dashboard since, well, I'm lazy. I didn't build that myself. Um, this is not the one I wanted. Let's see. We want auditing events, and we have this file beat thing here, which is basically tailing the log file I've shown you before. Um, and it's just collecting those. And over the last 15 minutes, we probably didn't have that many events, let's say, in the last 24 hours, because I set that instance up at night. You can see here. That's when I created my instance, then we had a lot of events. And you can generally see what kind of events did we collect. Um, is it something that a user did? Is it what we added a group, uh, some path access? You can see which users were doing things. Um, yeah, what commands were they running? Um, maybe some GeoIP information, though I don't have that in my example here, and which commands they basically were running. And that we can parse out of that um, auth log. Um, the problem is that auth log is a pain to parse, because every line looks kind of different and has a different number of elements. And at some point, we were kind of pissed off that this is so hard. And then we kind of redid this entire thing. So we've seen the demo. Um, but then we wrote a more specialized beat. So a beat is like a lightweight agent or shipper. And we have various beats for different purposes. So we have file beat to tail log files. We have metric beat for system and application metrics. We have packet beat for network data. We have a hard beat for pinging. And we have audit beat for anything security related. The idea of audit beat was generally um, we're using the audit D syntax. So you can just reuse the syntax that you had for audit D. But we're basically correlating related events immediately. We're resolving the user IDs. And we push that to Elasticsearch directly. So you don't need to write that file and then parse that file back and write the mess of regular expressions. Um, why did we not use eBPF? Because eBPF needs kind of newer kernels. And we have a lot of stuff on, I don't know, CentOS 6 or whatever ancient kernel versions they are using. And well, we wanted to have a solution for that as well. That's why we went the Audit D route, basically. Um, so it's giving you a lot of powers, maybe not all of them, but a lot of things you can do there. Um, you can run it side by side with Audit D, and it's, we think at least it's kind of easier to configure than what you have with Audit D. Um, and it supports um, Docker, because we can enrich from the Docker daemon. So basically, we know in which container or namespace something is running. Um, so we have the container side covered for that as well. So just to give you a quick idea um, what that looks like. Um, Audit beat, audit beat YAML. If I could type it, 
No. Oh, dude. oh yeah, that's true, thank you. It's too early for me. So um, this is generally the configuration that you have. So first off, we're saying something like, OK, we don't want to rate limit this. This is how many events we have in the backlog if we cannot reach Elasticsearch. Uh, do we want to include raw events, et cetera? And then after that pipe, basically, we have the general definition of our rules. Um, this is just might be slightly hard to read on blue. Um, but we have different kinds of things we can do. A, we can watch files. That's the W or we can do auditing events. And those are always dash A, and then we have an action and a filter. And the action can be always or never, and the filter then defines like which kind of events we want to collect. Um, and you can chain multiple options with a capital dash S. And with a keyword, that K, we can basically tag events afterwards. And I have set up some rules here, for example, here. Everything that affects identity, and I tag that with identity. So anything that touches the files, etc group, password, uh, shadow, etc. Any changes to those will be locked with identity. Um, I have if one of my users, so um, if my user, which is my developer user, I'll demo that afterwards, uh, is uh, reading etc pass uh, WD, um, that is being locked and will be a developer's password read. Um, we have, we're logging permission errors. Um, we are checking for specific processes and network connections. Um, we're also checking, for example, this one here checks, uh, is one of my pseudo users uh, using his powers to read the home directory of another user, which might also be interesting. Um, um, we're logging all the executed processes and anything that is elevating privileges. So those are just some example rules um, that we have. The other thing that we're adding over Audit D is that we can basically check the file integrity of specific files or folders. So here I'm just checking my web root. And anytime somebody changes my website, basically, I will log that and know which user has been changing my files. So if you're some, suddenly serving some weird content or malware, you might be want to monitoring what you're serving, and then you can figure out at least which user was changing that content when. And then you know at least who did it, so you can lock that user, and also when did you start serving something bad. And then in the end, I'm basically tagging my instances with some other attributes, and further down you have like the connection string to Elasticsearch and stuff like that. Um, OK, let's try to do something here. So first off, I want to SSH um, into my instance. Let's assume. This is failing. Let's try passwords that don't work. OK, that has failed. Um, where will that information end up? Yeah, so the, 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 fir the thing that I'm using here is um, I'm actually just using a regular log file. I'm using the auth log, var log auth log. Um, and then I can tail with the regular file bit, but you can get to that information as well. So just to give you an idea what that looks like, because, well, you know, everybody's trying to brute force SSH. In the last 15 minutes, this was now me who tried to, um, no, this was not just me. This is the last 24 hours. Um, OK, somebody found my instances again and tried stuff. Let's switch over to the last. Uh, uh, OK, somebody has been trying to brute force my instances quite aggressively. Um, nobody was successful in the last uh, 15 minutes, which is also nice. Um, OK, and ob obviously, this was me when I tried to log in here. And probably, this was me. And let's see where the root requests are coming from. OK, it's China, obviously. Normally, it's either China or Russia. Um, but when, when you let that run for a while, so you can see here from, from China, we had a bunch of login attempts. Um, and those were the three failed login attempts from my own side uh, with that Elastic user now. Um, I could, by the way, um, let's just say I, I'm only interested in the European ones. Um, you could just, um, basically, this is a filter where you set the geo points around that. And then you can see this was just me trying to log in, and everything else was coming from China. And then you can see. This was me. Um, since I'm roaming through my phone, that's why it's thinking I'm in Austria. Um, then you always end up in your home country, basically. So you can see what we have been doing here. Um, we can get rid of that filter again. And just to show you, um, I think over the last seven days, um, well, it's, I think this has been running longer already. So you can see here somebody 
was very active, uh, and today somebody found my instance again and, and tried their luck again. And you can see these were uh, my own uh, successful login attempts, this with the public key, and this with uh, a password, which you should not do, but to keep the demo simple, I'm using a password. And you can also see on a map, A, where are the users coming from? And yes, it's mostly China. And B, what usernames are they using? And it's always funny what people are trying, and you can get kind of an idea of what systems people are trying to attack. So this is the auth log. Um, so that was just kind of like a side quest to see um, how that is going. Now let's log in correctly. Um, and I now want to restart Nginx. Let's say service Nginx restart. And I'm not allowed to do that because I need to log in as another user. Um, let's say I want to use my Elastic admin user. Um, I hope I remember all the passwords. Um, I authenticated correctly, um, and now another event should be logged. So first off, um, just to give you an idea of what that looks like, we have in the auditing events, uh, we have a general overview of these are all the, let's not do the last 30 days, but let's just do, use the last 24 hours, for example. And you can see here, I recreated my instance, then I had a lot of events of executed programs and login events, etc. And now I've been doing stuff again, and well, logged in, authenticated, you have more events. You could filter down on specific events now and then see just those events or which errors happened and things like that. Um, but the one thing or the dashboard I'm interested in now is not the, the overview, um, but if I head over to the auditing events, I had executions. And I've just restarted Nginx, and I should be able to see that. Let's filter down to the last 15 minutes again. And you can see this was my Elastic user, which who restarted something. Let's see if I filter down to the, the Elastic user. Um, you can actually see down here, these were all the actions that my user has taken. So here, I was restarting that user. Um, by the way, I didn't really show you the raw events. Maybe that's something I should do as well. So these are all, <coughs> these are all the, the auditing events in the last 15 minutes. I had like 4,000 events. And if you unfold one of them here, uh, you can see um, the auditing event or the auditing data. Um, whatever appears something has been successful, like my root user was unsetting something in SSHD, okay? Um, you have all of that information. We also enrich that with some other information. So for example, here you see um, we have the host information. So you know where this is running and what operating system and uh, what, uh, yeah. So this is the operating system information. And since this is running on AWS, I also enrich the cloud information. So you can see which instance ID, which region, which availability zone, and stuff like that. So you can then filter down and drill into whatever operating system you're interested in or which availability zone or wherever something bad is happening to actually get to those events. Okay, so um, that was this user. Um, let's do something else. Let's log in with my admin user. Uh, okay, and let's say um, we're interested in let's say, home directories. And I'm the admin user, but I, I want to take a look at what my user, my regular user is up to. So let's say, um, let's see here, we have a secrets file. Well, that looks kind of challenging. So let's say, home elastic user secrets text. This will require sudo, obviously. So if you run that with sudo, um, it will then tell me, okay, the content of the secret file is my secret, which is not all that interesting, but we have collected all of these events, and we can actually um, filter down on those as well. So here, I basically have a filter, and I have a tag, and the tag I'm interested in here is um, power abuse. So this was the event where I basically tagged, like, if an admin or a user with sudo permissions is reading the home directory of another user, then I want to log a power abuse um, event. And if you filter down on that, you can actually see um, who has been up to what. So you can see this user has used his root privileges um, with less to read this file, which is kind of cool that you can track whatever everybody has been up to in your system. Okay, since we're running low on time, um, 
The one thing you need to believe me now is that the file integrity works as well. So if I was use or changing the website on my server, it would be locked as well that which user changed my website and you know why. Um, basically, we're using, depending on the operating system, we're different kinds of event handlers to check that. And what we're doing is we're hashing this, the files in those folders. Default is SHA-1, which is kind of a nice trade-off between performance and like good hashes. If you want the most performant uh, one, um, the last one, XSH64, um, should be the most performant hashing algorithm that we have in our system. But you can pick the right hashing algorithm and basically it's just hashing all the files in your folders and whenever it changes it knows, okay, this user changed this file from this hash to this hash. And it's just events mm -hmm. that we're collecting as well. Um, we'll skip the demo for time. Um, to conclude, I always can kind of explain our stack is a bit of Lego because you have all these building blocks and then you can build whatever you want. It's not like a solution you buy. It's not like some cloud service that you just plug in, but you can configure whatever makes sense for your environment. But there is some plugging involved, so you need to kind of put it together in the right way. Um, yeah, we've quickly looked at AuditD in general and why it's a pain to centralize those logs or events. We've looked at audit beat and what it can do, and then some logs and dashboards and what it was collecting there. By the way, why did we start with that? We Basically, we had to dog food something, though we, we never like to say dog food. We always say drink your own champagne. Um, why? Because, well, we have a cloud service and, well, there they wanted security events and basically that was, they started off with audit beat to have like something that is auditing all the events they have. Um, and that's where we got to that. If you want to play around with that, um, you, can log, you cannot create anything, any new visualizations, um, you cannot delete any data, but you can log in, or you're being logged in automatically into a dashboard, and then you can play around with all the dashboards. If you want to create your own events, this is not the pseudo user, but the regular user, um, you can also SSH into the box and just play around with that. So if anybody feels like giving it a try themselves, this is where you can do that. Um, and by the way, um, if you want to just see the, the configuration and the code, maybe I should add that to the slide. GitHub.com. Come here. So generally, this is the repository. This, it's all automated, so I have Terraform and Ansible to set up my cloud instance. And in the templates, you basically have all the configurations. You will be mainly interested in this example in audit bit and file bit, but you can get all the configurations and what I've kind of put together there if you want to check it out and apply it for yourself. And with that, I think we're done and we're pretty much in time. Um, are there any questions? By the way, before you run off, I always take a picture so I can prove to my colleagues that I've been working today. Because they, they, they normally don't know where I am, so smile, everybody. Wave, yeah, wave, thank you. Thank you. Any questions? You have to fill like two more minutes. So, oh, that was a real <laughs> tough way. Come to me afterwards if you have more questions. By the way, I have stickers over there. If you want stickers, grab them on your way out. Uh, so about the XX hash, is it really a good idea to use a non-cryptographic hash for security validation purposes? Well, it depends on... I, I guess it's a bit of a trade-off between speed and how, how good it should be. So, but you can pick from lots of algorithms. Is, is that okay or...? Okay, um, at least it's our current approach. Um, we are mainly concerned with speed, actually, to be honest. Especially if you take like larger folders, um, that it will not slow down your events. You can also like throttle how much scanning you want to do per minute. Um, so our main concern was actually speed. It's not about like having the perfect cryptographic algorithm for that, but more like, I mean, yeah, collisions are not that common depending on your algorithm. So. Sorry, uh, most modern uh, server CPUs will have acceleration for the common SHAs, and they're typically in the, the rates of gigabytes per second in terms of hashing speeds, so it should be acceptable as long as you use that acceleration. Okay, yeah, I mean, we always have like this, I'm running this on my Raspberry Pi, and you killed my Raspberry Pi, and I mean, the use cases are very wide, or we have like this very constrained Docker environment, so 
we were a bit cautious. But yeah, switch out the, the algorithm if you want another one. I think that should get you okay. going. Okay, so we've got time for one more question. So I think you were next. Okay. Uh, well, I've seen uh, the Terraform and Beats configuration in the GitHub rep uh, repository. Uh, do you also publish the Kibana dashboard setup ah, there? All the dashboards I've shown are built in. I didn't build a single dashboard. All of that is built into the beat. Basically, when you connect the beat to Elasticsearch, you can just say, like, insert those dashboards for me, and they're there. So all the visualizations you have seen, everything is built in already. OK. I will try it out. Thanks. Sure. Either online or just install it yourself. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you, Philip. And give him a wonderful applause.